Hi everyone, if you're writing a paper, you probably should consider adding an outside source to your paper to support the points you're trying to make. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to talk about how to do that in this video using a little strategy that I learned somewhere in the teaching world uh, called the PIE method, P-I-E. The P stands for making a point. The I stands for introducing and illustrating someone else's ideas, an outside source, you know, a quote or a paraphrase or a summary. And then the E stands for explaining how the quote, paraphrase or summary connects to your point, okay? So when you do this, you're bringing in an expert's words. And when you do that, you give your paper more authority. So let's talk about how to do that. Integrating quotes, paraphrases, and summaries into your papers. And I'm just going to read it. It says, when you want to show support for something that you are writing, you can use facts, reasons, examples, details, but you can also use quotes, paraphrases, and summaries. When do we use quotes? We use quotes to add the voice of an outside source, the voice of an expert to our writing. And we use their exact words when we do that. We specifically want to use their words because we want to show that they are different from ours. Their tone is different. They sound different and that adds impact to our paper. We paraphrase to add some evidence from an outside source or an expert but when the wording doesn't matter, you don't have to have their exact wording, okay? And then we summarize when we want to give an overview, a very brief overview of an outside source's evidence or information. So uh, the, the question is, how do we integrate those outside sources into our own writing within our own papers, okay? So that's what this video is about. To integrate these forms of outside sources into your papers, you should know how to make the ideas and grammatical structures flow together smoothly. And one easy way to do this is using the PIE method, like I mentioned earlier. P is your point. I introduce and illustrate your outside source, quote, paraphrase, summary. And E, explain how it supports your point. So let's talk about the P part. In most papers that you write, you'll need to make your point, which is your main idea, clear through a thesis statement and topic sentences. And when you make your point, you try to convince the reader that you're right. And to do this, you use facts, reasons, examples, details, quotes, paraphrases, and summaries. And when you bring in quotes, summaries, and paraphrases, you're using the voices of, an, of experts, of outside sources, okay? So... Let's look at an example of a point. Here's one. Community colleges are better for students than universities because of the price differences. Remember, a point is usually a thesis statement or a topic sentence or some point you're making in your paper, and that's always going to be your opinion, right? This is clearly an opinion, so how can we convince the reader that we're right? Well, let's get some outside source and bring in that authority voice. Okay, so that's the I part. Introduce and illustrate your quote, paraphrase, and summary. A quote, paraphrase, and summary should never suddenly appear out of nowhere. Introduce them by naming the author's name. And if you're using MLA, you can also just put the author's last name in parentheses after you cite the source. Um, also, you need to use a signal phrase with a strong reporting verb that shows the um, expert or author's intent. So let's look at some signal phrases. These are templates that you can just use and plop information into in order to integrate, introduce your quotes, paraphrases, and summaries into your own writing. So you've probably heard this one according to. So we use according to, and then we use the title of the source, or you can just say the author's name, according to plus by and the author's name, or just according to plus the author's name. And then you introduce the source, the quote, the paraphrase, or the summary. So for example, 
According to Aspects of College by Perez, Within two years, the community college student will have saved almost $15,000 more than the state university student has. That would be a great way to introduce that quote. Another template for doing that would be just using the author's name and then a reporting verb. And then optionally, you can use the word that, depending on how the quote or paraphrase flows into the rest of your sentence. So for example, Perez reports that, Within two years, the community college student will have saved almost $15,000 more than the state university student has. So that's another one. Or you can say in his or her book, article, you can start like this, this template. In his or her book, article, etc., whatever the publication is, then the name of the author, then a reporting verb, then the word that, and then your quote, paraphrase, or summary. So see the example. In his book, Aspects of College, Perez observes, within two years, the community college student will have saved almost $15,000 more than the state university student has. Or here's another one. You can just say in the author's name, okay, plus the word view. So in Perez's view, and then you give the source. So in Perez's view, Within two years, the community college student will have saved almost $15,000 more, more than the state university student has. All right, so those are some templates, but now here, here's another, another way you could do it. For all the phrases above, it's also possible to just omit the author's name in the introductory phrase and just include it at the end in the parentheses after the quote or paraphrase or summary. So it might look like this. In his view, and by the way, you would only say his if the reader knew who he was. You have to mention the author at some point before using his, otherwise the writer, the reader won't know who that is. But let's imagine you have mentioned the author's name. So you can just say, in his view, within two years, the community college student will have saved almost $15,000 more than the state university student has, Perez. 99. You put the author's name at the end. Okay, so these are just different ways to integrate and introduce a quote, a paraphrase, or a summary, basically an outside source into your own writing. Okay, so now let's talk about the verbs. I mentioned reporting verbs. When you're using those signal phrases, those templates, you want to use a nice strong reporting verb. You don't want to ever say talks about. Don't use that when you're integrating a source into your writing. It's not academic enough and it doesn't really convey what you're trying to say. Instead, if you use a verb like argue or observes or claims, this, is, this conveys or expresses an idea that might be more in line with what the author is actually pointing out or what you, the writer, want to show, right? So maybe you you really wanna, you're angry about something or you're, you're really passionate about it, you know, you want you want to make that clear through the verb that you choose, okay? Um, so it says, note that the verb you choose helps orient your reader toward your opinion, like Jones says is neutral, Jones informs us is positive, and Jones alleges is somewhat negative. So choose your reporting verbs um, with intention. Okay, so now we've, we've looked at point and we've looked at introduction illustration. Let's look at how that looks together. All right, community colleges are better for students than universities because of the price differences. That's the point. In his book, Aspects of College, Perez observes Within two years, the community college student will have saved almost $15,000 more than the state university student has. Now we have a nice quote that supports that point. It's great, okay? But hold on, you're not done. You can't just throw in a quote and not explain it. You can't, that's called a dropped quote. You want to explain, you want to make it really clear to the reader how that quote or paraphrase or summary connects back to the point you made earlier. So let's talk about the E part. 
P-I-E, the E, explain. You need to explain how the quote paraphrase summary supports your point. Don't just use an outside source and then leave the words hanging as if they're obvious. What is your interpretation or opinion of it? Discuss them to show how they support your point. So don't do this. Look at this example of a dropped quote. The IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, is useful because learning how to produce sounds in a new language can be challenging, so having a tool to help is important. That's the point. In fact, in her article, The Power of IPA, Ayankan states that the real power of IPA comes when it's used to learn how to pronounce not just words, but entire languages. Great quote. I see that it supports the point, but you need to, as the writer, make it clear to the reader what it is that you're trying to pull out of that outside source and how you want to connect it to the point you've made. So look at this example where that is done. I'm going to read it again. The IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, is useful because learning how to produce sounds in a new language can be challenging. So having a tool to help is important. In fact, in her article, The Power of IPA, a Ayankan states that the real power of IPA comes when it is used to learn how to produce not just words, but entire languages. In other words, the IPA can be a tool that can remove the obstacles of challenging sounds and help language learners quickly move on to learn other important components of the language. That is the explanation part. That puts the point that you're making as a writer and connects it to that quote. It synthesizes those two things together and makes it really clear to the reader what you're trying to say with that quote, okay? So how do you how do you do that? How do you connect the quote or the paraphrase or the summary to an explanation? Here's some phrases you can use. You can say, after your quote, paraphrase, or summary, you can say, here we see that, da 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 da. Or you can say, in other words, da 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 da. Or this statement shows, or clearly then, or we can conclude from this that, or this tells us that, or from this we can understand that. Okay, so those are just some ways to do that. All right, so finally, let me show you an example of all of this thrown together into a nice pie, P-I-E, with the point, the introduction and illustration of an outside source, and then an explanation. Here's the point. Being a student athlete carries with it much more than academics and athletics. It's an identity that many may not understand. Okay, so let's introduce and illustrate that with an outside source. Or let's illustrate that with an outside source, but let's introduce it using, using an, a nice signal phrase. In her study of Division I student-athletes, ethnographer Julie Cheville notes the identity-related challenges that come with playing a team sport as a perpetual dilemma for players and coaches to recognize and sustain identities of difference in the midst of public pressures to be the same and conceptual pressures to think the same. Okay, now, that, that, that sentence from the writer and from the quote, the expert, the outside source, was integrated really nicely. Um, the writer, in introducing that quote, actually kind of summarized the whole, um, the whole article, but then threw in that quote in a way that smoothly connected those two um, writers' voices, okay? And then now here's the explanation. In other words, so what does this quote mean? In other words, student athletes must struggle to maintain their own sense of self while still integrating seamlessly into the team. Student athletes are not the only ones involved in this identity struggle, rather, public pressures and conceptual pressures can work against others to see them as individuals. That's what that means. That's how that quote connects back to the author's original point. Okay, so this isn't easy. It takes a lot of practice. It does take time, 
and really seeing examples from other writers, maybe from other students, and just reading um, essays that have outside sources integrated into them really is going to help give you the exposure to this and help you eventually produce it on your own in the best way that you can. So I hope this helps you. All right. Bye-bye.